is it time to say goodbye to the five-day, 40-hour work week? I don't know about you, but by the time Thursday comes and goes, I am more than ready for the weekend and perhaps on occasion a tad less efficient than I was a few days earlier. A number of studies and pilot programs have explored the issue and found widespread success for employees and their employers. And now a group of some state lawmakers are pushing for something similar here in Massachusetts. One bill would establish a pilot program with qualifying employers to study the impacts of a four-day, 32-hour work week. Another would take a very different approach to make four-day work weeks the norm. The legislator behind that second bill, Representative Erica Eiderhoven of Somerville, joins me now along with Juliet Shore. She's an economist and sociology professor at Boston College, and she serves on the board of the nonprofit Four Day Week Global. She was also the lead researcher on the organization's global pilot program. Thank you both for being here. Erica, let's start with you. What would your legislation do on this front? Yeah, so my legislation is pretty straightforward. It would ensure that we have 32 hour work weeks, and that would be considered the, the normal work week um, in the state of Massachusetts. How would it ensure yeah. that? Um, it's, I mean, it's the same as how we have, you know, eight-hour days, 40-hour work weeks. So that's, you know, essentially put into law like that is the norm. Um, similarly, the United Arab Emirates did something with their, you know, similar thing with their um, workforce in the government. Of course, it wasn't mandated by corporations, but they eventually just followed because it became the, the norm as well. And so, tell me if I've got yeah. this right. Your bill, were it to become law, would yeah. require that over 32 hours a week, people are paid time Over and a half. Over time, right. That's right? correct. Yeah, that's okay. absolutely. So. Uh, your colleagues, Josh Cutler and Dylan Fernandez, as you know, are taking a different approach. As I mentioned a moment ago, they're incentivizing or they're proposing a program mm -hmm. that would incentivize employers to experiment with this. The employers would get a tax break for doing so. Is that approach, that second approach, more politically palatable, perhaps, not just to House mm -hmm. leadership, but also to the business community, which I would imagine might bristle at some of these proposed changes? Sure, yeah. I mean, I think they're both great proposals. And like with anything, right, we always love to study them and understand them and do more trials. And, you know, although we have had many trials done across the country, having one specifically in Massachusetts, I think, is also just a great idea as well. But I think it's also important that we keep driving the narrative that really, I mean, this whole idea of a 40-hour work week isn't just, you know, didn't descend from nowhere or set in stone, right? This is something that actually uh, was first changed in New England to have that first five, go from six days to five days. Um, and really just draws to question, right? Like, why do we have a five-day work week or 40 hours a, you know, week um, work week? That There's no real, like, reason for that, right? That has just kind of just been the norm what that we've had for, for a while. And I think, if anything, um, I think my proposal is a, is a very modest one because, you know, we had actually... You know, back in uh, the 60s and prior to that, the Senate subcommittees said, you know, because of increase in productivity, they expected that we were going to be working only 15 hours a week um, in the future. And when you think huh. about how much we've had so much technological advancement, increase in productivity, and yet one job isn't still enough, right? And yet people aren't being paid a living wage. And so there's drawing to question much bigger issues around, you know, what is, what should work look like? And what, you know, how do we take advantage of all these increases in technological advancements? Juliet Shore, in addition to everything that I mentioned before, you gave a TED Talk last year, which has a whole bunch of views online, called The Case for the Four-Day Work Week. Can you, uh, forgive me, I, I uh, omitted the subtitle, Benefits for Employees, Employers, and Society as a Whole. Can we start with employees and employers, and can you talk us through, in the trials that have been done, what is gained by those two groups when a four-day work week is implemented? Sure. Um, so we're on our seventh trial now. We have you know, probably 6,000 employees around the world, many in the U.S. and Canada, and uh, what we found is that across all the measures of well-being, there are big increases for employees, whether we're talking about reduced stress and burnout, better mental and physical health, more life and uh, job and uh, time satisfaction, less anxiety and fatigue, better exercise and better sleep, uh, and so forth. So those are all really well documented and very, very consistent across industries, kinds of people, countries, et cetera. Uh, I think what people would be most surprised about is how much the companies are thriving as well. So almost all of the companies that have gone through our trials are continuing with the four day week. They're just a handful really that uh, have decided, often because they get an ownership change, not to continue it. Um, they're reporting that productivity is either staying the same or going up because they go through a process of sort of rethinking what they're doing before they start to make it possible for people to be as productive in four days as they are in five. 
performance is better, revenue is up. So it's really happy campers on both sides. I think we have a graphic that drives home some of what you've talked about in terms of the benefits to employers and employees as well. First off, uh, from the pilot program that you put together, let's look at revenue changes for employers that have participated. During the four-day week trial, uh, revenue I have went up 8% and then compared to the prior year went up 38%. Can you just talk me through those numbers so I get those correct or we understand those correctly? Yeah, so those are from the first two trials, which are uh, US, Canada, Ireland, and one big global company. 8% um, eight, eight increases over the course of the trial. We were a little ah, bit, okay. we were a little bit, so from beginning of trial to end, we're a little bit concerned about seasonality in some of these businesses because it's just a six month trial. So we said, okay, let's compare to the six months be, uh, in the previous year, same six months. The, the, I don't think that 35% uh, roughly figure is really mostly due to the four day week. I, it, a lot of it has to do with coming out of COVID. Because that makes sense. 21 to 22. But the 8% the, uh, during the trial um, shows that while they are doing this, their, their revenue is is uh, really robust. I want to roll one more set of numbers and then get back to you, Erica. This is, I believe, from your first two trials as well, and it involves the benefit to employees. The employees at companies that participated, 67% reported feeling less burnout, and I believe employee fatigue levels improved by 9%. That burnout number is really striking to me. Yes, um, because there's they're just... We have a, a stressed out and burned out workforce in the United States right now. It's part of why we have unfilled positions and great resignation. It's, it's, it's by no means the only thing that's going on, but it's also one of the reasons that employers are starting to look at this innovation and say, you know, maybe I should do this, both because they care about uh, employee well being. Um, but in many cases, also, they need to keep their employees from right. quitting because they're burned out. Erica, I'm wondering if, if your bill were to become law, is there a risk that some employers would say, well, okay, we have to pay time and a half when we go over 32 hours. Um, so we'll just pay what we used to pay at 32 hours. Mm -hmm. People will take a 20% cut in hours work and a 20% cut in wages. Mm -hmm. So if it were to happen that way, then employees would just end up paying a price? For this well, extra yeah, day. and I think that's where I think the bigger question around here is around, right, like one job not being enough, the fact that, you know, people still have to work multiple jobs to be able to, you know, pay their bills in, in Massachusetts. And so to me also, I think it is important to talk about this as not just when people say four day work week, they think, oh, it's the knowledge economy, maybe tech, right? We've heard of law firms, but really we've actually seen the same benefits with, again, the same amount of productivity or if not better um, for frontline workers, for nurses, for, you know, garbage collectors with outcomes that were actually you know more positive like for example with you know patient outcomes and and you know seeing the the impact there so it really does come down to where do we put our priorities and how do we ensure that we can have that kind of transition so that we have outcomes that are positive for all. I'm glad you mentioned that because yeah. I do think of this and other changes to work, one of which I'm going to ask Juliet about in a moment, as very much the province of white collar work. Right. So I'm glad that you pointed that out. Juliet, we have been in the midst of this great big rethinking of at least the way white collar work currently works and maybe the way work in general should work. Right now, I come into the WGBH studios maybe two or three days a week instead of five days a week. I really appreciate that flexibility. I feel like it's made my life better in a number of ways. I'm glad that we're permitting it moving forward. But I'm wondering if you think that the changes that we've seen over the past couple of years lend even more momentum to the push for a four-day work week, or conversely, if they maybe sap that momentum, since we've already changed so much that we used to take for granted. I think that they have increased the momentum. I mean, the four-day week's been around for a while. Pre-pandemic, it was sort of, you know, a small number of companies implementing it and maybe evangelizing about it, but really very, very few. Um, the pandemic really changed a lot. And, and what, what we're hearing from employers is that the shift to remote work kind of opened their eyes to the possibilities of other kinds of changes. As one CEO, actually the first one in our trials, the first company in our trials told me, he said, work from home taught us that we could trust our employees about where they work 
And we can also trust them about how much time they spend at work. And so I think it's given uh, you know, a lot of uh, momentum to the four day week movement. Uh, Erica, I think you're going to get the last word here. Where do things stand right now with the legislation that you filed and that your colleagues have filed? I mean, it's just the beginning of session, so we are yeah. still having these discussions. But I think, like uh, you know, Professor Shore said, right, this has been a really serious uh, issue and a conversation we've had because of coming out of the global pandemic. It's really defined what it means to to work and what does productive mean and how we can utilize our, our time more efficiently. And I, I will add just one piece that, as a legislator, um, oftentimes we don't come in on Fridays. We work kind of almost the four-day work week, so I find it to be a you know helpful conversation to have, especially amongst us. Uh, in That's the a good point. You tend to be in the district, I think, right. is the, yes. the term of art on Fridays. All right, Erica Eiderhoven, Juliet Short, thank you both.